Welcome and welcome to today's live social media marketing masterclass. I hope you can all hear me well. My name is Christoph and I'm one of the organizers of the Enterprise Adventure. And this is Alondra, who is a small business owner and a marketing expert. Um, before we get started, I'd like to ask you all to introduce yourselves in the chat. So maybe you can tell us your name and your country so that we can understand uh, where everybody is joining us from today. So please feel free, if you feel comfortable, to share your name and your country in the chat. Hi, David from Nigeria. Hi, Daniel from Nigeria. We've also got Daniela from Nigeria. Hi. Faith from Nigeria. So lots of people coming from Nigeria. We've got Sparsh from India, Peshal from India. Hi, Garvit from India. Okay, so I think there's yeah, so far we have, oh, and we have Bernadine from Nigeria also. Hello, everyone. It's so nice to have you here. Who else do we have? Do we have anyone else? Okay, I'm just going to wait one more minute to allow time for late arrivals and then we'll we'll get started. Okay, I think yeah, let's start. So next slide please. So before Alondra launches into today, today's topic, we're going to do a quiz. And to access this quiz, you'll need to go to www.menti.com and use the code 38456020. So you can access this quiz from any device. So if you're on your phone or if you're on your computer, just open up the internet and go to menti.com and use the code 38456020. I'll give you all a minute to do that. The quiz isn't open. I think I can see we have four participants so far. Alondra is going to paste the link you need to click on and the code. Okay, I can see we have six people now. So I'm just going to wait for another minute uh, so that we have everyone and then we're going to. Yeah, we're going to start quizzing. If you have any troubles, you can say in the chat if you cannot log in. Yeah, absolutely. If, you, if you're struggling to get to the quiz, just t type in the chat and we'll help you. Got six people so far. Oh, seven, someone else just arrived. Eight people in the chat. We're getting there. We're getting there. <laughs> I 
Okay. Nine, nine people. Nine. We're going to give one more minute for everyone to arrive. So this quiz is going to have five questions and you're going to need to be quite quick, okay? So I hope you're all ready. Has anybody not joined the quiz? If you need help, just type in the chat bar. Hi, Nelly. Nelly, you need to go to the website www.menti.com. It's written here in the, in the chat bar. And then you need to enter the code 38456020. Let us know once you are in, Nelly. Oh, here we go. The quiz has started. You have 13 seconds to answer this question. Five seconds. Okay. So the answer was 4 billion, the number of people who use social media worldwide. So on planet Earth, we have 8 billion people. So half of those people are on social media. So well, probably everyone that you know must have social media. Yeah, so absolutely huge number. Next question. How much time does the average user spend on social media or messaging apps per day? Is it two hours, two and a half hours, three hours, or four hours? You have five seconds left. The correct answer was two and a half hours per day. People on average spend two and a half hours looking at social media or on messaging apps. It's an incredible amount of time considering we're only awake for about 16 hours. So, yeah. Yeah, and some people spend more than 2.5 hours. Yeah, some people <laughs> are spending five hours a day, maybe more. Maybe you guys are spending more time than that. But this is just to yeah, help you understand that people are spending a lot of time on there. And we'll, we'll be talking about that in more detail later. Question three. Facebook is the world's most used platform by social media marketeers. Is that true or is it false? You have 12 seconds to answer. Do you think that Facebook is the most used platform for social media marketing? Three seconds, time is up. Most of you got it right, six of you got it right. The answer is true. So Facebook, you guys are quite young, so maybe you don't use it very much. Facebook is struggling at the moment. It's in decline, but it is still, in terms of marketing, social media marketing, the number one platform in the world. So people who work in social media marketing, they still have to think about, about Facebook. And business owners, they still have to consider Facebook, even if they don't necessarily use it themselves. Yeah. It has a lot of benefits. 
For sure. Next question, question four. Let's go. What's this question going to be? Name this social media platform. What is that logo? Is it Reddit? Is it TikTok? Is it Snapchat? Is it Instagram? Do you recognize it? I'm sure some of you are on this social media platform. Let's see the result. You all got it right. Well done. So yeah, it's TikTok. It's the most rapidly growing social media platform in the world right now. It's, as you know, you guys all know it. It's super popular right now and it's super effective for social media marketing. So brands and influencers are using um, TikTok to grow their businesses and to make sales. And yeah, it's just being really effective right now. Yeah, I think that's the one I use. I spend most of my time on TikTok. <laughs> nice. Mm -hmm. Final question. Which of these social media platforms is used 75% by women? Ignore the logo. Ignore the logo. Which of these platforms is used 75% by women? Is it Instagram, Pinterest, Facebook, Twitter? Okay, most of you got it right. Six of you said Pinterest. So Pinterest, three quarters of the users are women, often slightly older women. And the reason we put this question in the quiz is it's really important to understand that different types of people use different platforms. And we'll talk later about picking the right platform for your business. But we'll get onto that later. Yeah, and even if Pinterest is not like the social media channel that you would have thought, it, it is a really good one to get into that market, which is, which is women. Yeah. So the results are in. We've got three winners. So well done to Peschel, Victory, and Daniel. So well done to you three. Everyone did really well in the quiz. I hope you enjoyed it. That was just a little warm up activity to get us kind of thinking about social media, thinking about marketing. But now I'm going to hand over to Alondra because she's the expert and she's going to tell you about her story. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Alondra. I am from Mexico and it's so nice to, to talk to you today and see that we have people from many different countries, which is, is really good. And I'm really glad that at your young age, you are interested in how to promote your products and like kind of like finding out different ways to do it. So it's a pleasure for me to be with you today. And before I tell you about my experience in social media marketing, I want to go over the basics so that we are all on the same page. Some of you may know a lot about social media marketing already, and some of you may not know anything about it, but don't worry, like that, that's okay because we're here like to learn and we're gonna start from the beginning. Absolutely. So first, I want us all to agree what social media marketing is. So could someone um, raise their hand if you can in, in, in your, computer and tell me in your own words what is social media marketing i don't see any hands raised so in your own words someone can tell us what is social media marketing what do you think is social media marketing oh we have first hand. so i'm going to ask you to unmute so you could please explain us. She, Daniela? Social media marketing is the use of social media platforms to promote products and services. We, we hear what you 
said is the use of social media to promote your business. That is great. If somebody else also wants to tell us what do you think social media marketing is? Somebody else that wants to raise their hand. Does anybody else have a different definition or does someone someone agree with with Daniela? David. Yes, David. Um, social media marketing is the use of social media platforms to make your business popular to a wide range of audience. Thank you, David. Yes, that that is that is right. I think Danielle also wants to to participate. So please, Danielle. Social media marketing is the use of various social media platforms to reach out to your target market or your target audience. Exactly. Those are three great definitions of what social media marketing is. Um, thank you, Daniela, Danielle, and David for your your answers. So this is the definition that I like to use. Social media marketing is the use of social media platforms and websites to promote a product or a service, which is pretty much what, what you said. And the second part here in this sentence, you can see that it's in blue and it's because it's really important. So I'm sure that probably all of you are using social media to connect with your friends or family or discover like cool things, like what's going on in the world or what's going on in your city. But today we are particular, particularly interested in how social media can be used as a marketing tool for your business. Because that's what the enterprise adventure is all about, which is setting up your own very, and your own little business. And social media marketing can play a big role in this. As we saw earlier, one in every two people on earth use social media in some form. So it is a great way to reach people. So sometimes you wouldn't have even thought, but from your town, you can reach people that are 10 hours away that otherwise you would have never reached them or probably in a completely different continent. So it's a really great way to get your product known. And now I have a question for all of you. So I want you to tell me what do you think are some of the benefits of social media marketing over traditional forms of marketing, which are like newspapers and television. So if anybody wants to share the, their thoughts, you can raise your hand and then you can share them with us. So the question is, what are the benefits of social media over traditional forms of marketing? So why is social media better than television or newspapers and so on? Yes, let's go first with Daniel. So social media is better than the newspapers because it's a faster way of getting an upcoming brand or an already made brand out to its customers and its audience. Exactly, like in, with newspapers, you would have to like send your plan, your your ad advert and send it to the newspaper and then wait for them. And it's also sometimes it may cost a lot mm. to to have your ad on newspapers. So yes, it's a, it's a benefit. Um, Yes, um, Faith? Uh, Faith, uh, we're, can you tell us what do you think are the benefits of social media over traditional? Wait, of the benefits of using social media instead of newspapers is that 
you get new variety of customers every day. Yes, sometimes the people that read the newspapers are the same all the time. Yes. Yeah, new people, wider variety of people. Yeah. And finally, uh, David, do you want to tell us what do you think are the benefits? Um, because of the fact that social media is very accessible and a lot of people are on social media platforms, it makes it easier for your business to be noticed when you market through a social media platform. Exactly. Like you don't have to pay to have Facebook or Instagram. It's free. So it there is more people that have access to, to those kind of platforms instead of buying for a newspaper or buying a, a magazine. Mm. Should we see? Does anybody else like Garvit or Spash or Nelly? Do you have any thoughts about how social media is better than traditional traditional marketing channels? Or maybe Bernadine or Victory. Let's, uh, I want everyone to, to have a chance to share their opinion today. And if you don't want to talk, oh, there's someone. But if you don't want to talk, you can also write on the chat like your, your answer. Yeah. And we have Nelly. Another benefit of social media marketing is that when you post something on the net, it spreads very quickly. So people come in, those that are interested will come in and tell you whether they want to buy it or not. And like newspapers, it takes a lot of time. Thank you, Nelly. And yes, you are completely right. It, you can reach like a pretty big um, variety of people with social media. And anybody else? Okay, well, maybe you can move on now, Alondra. Yes, so thank you for, for your answers. And uh, you mentioned some, and there are so many benefits to using social media for marketing. And the most, like the four most important reasons, in my opinion, or what I've seen, are that first, it is affordable. Like you said, you only need a small budget on social media, and it can go a long way. If you use that budget wisely, and by wisely, I mean, you have a knowledge of the target that you want to reach, you can set up Facebook ads or Instagram ads and choose just like, if I, my target is um, women from 17 to 24 years old, I can set up an ad specifically for that and also the region that I want. So in case I don't have, like my, if my product, I only sell it in my hometown, then I can only spend that money in my town instead of spending it in like my whole, like a whole state, which probably in the newspaper, like the newspaper prints in like a whole state. So then this way you can be like, have more targeted ads. And the second one is that it is easier to tell your brand story and show its personality. So one part that is really important right now in marketing is that we're not only selling a product or a service, but we're selling like the whole aspect of the, the product. I am showing who I am. If I am interested in the environment, I can put that into the product's personality and I have more like places or that I can like in my Instagram, I can write different posts that are related to it. So you can write like the whole story for people when they go to your accounts, your accounts, they can see like, oh, so this is a product that is like concerned about the environment or a product that I, I believe what the product says. So it is, it is a good way. 
mm. to, to show the whole personality. And the third one is that potential customers, they can interact directly with the brand. So it's a two-way communication. So that creates trust. It's pretty easy for your clients if they have any questions to immediately they can ask they can ask you the questions instead of if they see an ad they probably like oh i have to go grab my phone i have to find the the like the account but this way they are already there so they can just see me like any questions they have if you are selling something like like baskets and they come in different sizes then you can they can ask you like, so, but what are the sizes? Do you have any other sizes? So it's a pretty like direct communication. And the third one is that you can measure the impact of your marketing. So here you will know how many people watch, like saw your advert. You can see how many people interacted with that advert whether it was a like whether if if it's on facebook they can save your your posts so maybe they don't want to buy now but they are saving it because they want to go back to the future and you as a business owner you can see how many people are doing that and so there are many like metrics that you can find for social media that in traditional marketing you could get some of these metrics, but it will have to be like some like probably a longer process. You have to talk to the people in the newspaper. And then even if they tell you that um, a thousand people bought the newspaper, you don't know if that people actually saw your ad. So this is a great way to know if it's actually reaching the, the people. So now that we have seen the importance of social media when it comes to marketing, I want to tell you a little bit about my journey building a small business on social media. So when I left school, I started political science in Mexico. And you might think like polit political science and business are not related but I actually worked in, in my field in a marketing company like for all the politicians they have a, a pretty big part of like marketing so you can get to know the politicians so when after I finished school and I was in between jobs and then I was looking for another job in my hometown the market it was not so good at the moment so I wanted to have like a small business to make some money because something that I've always done is that even if I have a job, like right now, um, you probably have seen me before because I work at Determined to Fish, but I've always liked having something that like my own business, because I don't know, like, and you probably feel the same way that it's, it's a pride, that's something that you can create and that you can sell. So I was like, okay, I, I want to make, make some money while I find um, a more like permanent job. And I knew that to make money, I needed to do something original, that something that was different than what was available. So that way I would have people like being interested in not having like be, have a competitive advantage over my other like other businesses and i thought that what is something that i like but is not available in my town right now and something that i like but i can do and i came up with the idea of macarons i don't know if you have heard but this you can see here the picture it's basically a cookie that is originally from france although Italians are gonna say that it's also <laughs> Italian. Um, but like I mentioned at the beginning, I, I am from Mexico. So at the moment, these the macarons were not available in my hometown. And I really enjoyed eating them when I went to Mexico City, which is the capital of Mexico, but in my hometown, they were not available. So I had never made one before but my mom she's really good at baking so i asked for her help 
and we practice uh, like many bakes and you might know this because you go through when you have a new product you have to practice practice until you get the product and the result that you're happy with and to show the world and be like okay this this can be a, a real business so after we made it we have different flavors of the macarons we're like okay so how are we going to promote it because we already like i have already told some of my friends and family and they they liked it and they were buying it but i wanted to reach um more people i want to sell more so we decided to set up an instagram account and we thought that instagram was the right platform for us because it is very visual and because we knew that our target audience felt comfortable buying from there like they can see who is following you and they can see like oh some of my friends are following the account so maybe it is it's trustworthy so if i buy from there i can i can do it and then because our our target was mostly women and they were like on instagram and we could set up the ads from there so it was a a really easy platform for us to promote the products at a really low cost and then we kept baking and i started taking nice photos and from i started posting the photos and i where with an Instagram account, that's always not on mute. I'm <laughs> sorry for, for that. So, through the pictures, I didn't want to be like, oh, buy from us, but I wanted to tell a whole story for people that would go to, to this, um, to the account. And my story was like, what comes from eating the macarons? Like, what, what is the experience that you get? so that that way people would like be more interested in buying instead of because take into account that many people did not know these type of cookies so it was kind of like introducing them to this so i need, needed to tell this story that this is a, a cookie that is made in france and then also it's really important that all the little things that are that are like um, all the characteristics from your products. For example, in the macarons case, it's made with almond flour, which makes them gluten-free. So all the characteristics that you can think about your product that you showcase them in your, in your social media accounts. And then our big break was when some market organizers they like they organized a market to sell clothes to sell like bakery sell bread like many things they saw our instagram page and because they liked all the pictures and like they understood the concept they invited us to come to the market and sell our product so we made a pretty good amount of sales and in the market like we also what we did is like we use every opportunity to keep promoting our business so we made little cards with the handle of our instagram so to everyone that comes they can just take it and the good thing is that when you have a social media platform and you have in your social media how they can reach you and like everything it makes so much easier to like that interest of the clients like make it into sales which at the end is what we want as business owners so you have to make it really easy for your clients to translate that like, interest into actual sales and even from the market, we, my mom and I had a picture in the newspaper. So that was also uh, an extra uh, promotion for, for it. A uh, thing I did is we run Instagram ads. And by this point, like we had a good understanding of our market. So we wanted women that had 
a little bit of like disposable disposable income because these like macarons are made with almond flour, so it are slightly up market goods. So we wanted women that would actually like would be willing to to buy the macarons, and it is really easy to to set up your Instagram ads, and they were really effective for us. We didn't spend much, and that is also a recommendation that I, I have for you. You don't have to spend a lot, and what you have to do is do some like tests. D don't put a lot of money if you're going to run Instagram ads. Don't be like, okay, all my budget that I have for marketing, I'm gonna use it. There. Like no, like it's good to try. Like if I try this um, range, like age um, range. And for women, or what if it happens if this time I try with men and women, like try to do like different things when you're starting with, with the setup, the way that you set up your ads. So that way, you know, what is going to be the most like efficient way for you to do like what you can do. And yeah, we saw like that mostly around times like it was like Christmas or Valentine's Day that the first years we saw like oh we're, this is the time that we're selling the most so then we decided to also run the ads around that time so those if we have a budget for marketing for the whole year put like a big part of Valentine's Day or Christmas Day because those are the days that people are like more willing to spend but that is like for our business maybe in your business you can see something different so it's really important that you take note from everything that you see like if you have records of when you're selling the days that you're selling that is really important that after a while you're like okay you analyze that and you can get those insights and then you can, can make decisions about your business so after a while i did get a job but my mom continued running the business and so yes this is the social media like this is our instagram account and you can see there are many different different pictures the the important thing is that you're showcasing your product in a truly like truly way that you are like people what they see it's what they're going to get but also like in our case, it was something that I want to aspire. Like I want to get the, those cookies. So in this case, it was like, how can we make it really like people watch it and they will want to get it. So what we did was like, maybe you can see it's kind of small, but we have many different colors. And then we also personalized it in case they wanted us to write some letters. So that is something that is also good from social media that when you're talking to the customers and they can tell you, oh, I want it like this. I want one that says happy birthday. So you can have that like straight communication with, with the, the customers. Wow, thank you so much for sharing your story, Alondra. So basically from your kitchen with an Instagram, you started a business. Um, before we move on, I just want to give all our adventurers a chance to maybe ask you some questions. So does anybody at this point have any questions for Alondra? Do you want to know anything about her business? Do you have any questions about the techniques she used or anything like that? Just raise your hand. I think we have a few people. Oh. Yes, uh, David. Um, my question is, did you have any um, bad energy from anybody. Sorry? Did you have any bad energy from anybody? Um, it's sometimes it gets complicated, but not, it was not like bad energy, but you have customers that start asking you questions like, oh, so how much, uh, what's the price for this? And then you tell them. And then like you engage, engage in so many conversations, like, keep talking to the person and then at the end they were like oh well I don't want it so you spend time with those customers but it it is important also like not to get discouraged like 
Um, I think we never had a problem of people not liking the final product, but in that process of making like the transaction, um, probably the worst thing that happened is that we made a few boxes and then they never came to pick it up. But from there, I learned, we learned that we needed to ask a deposit, like maybe pay us like 50% in advance or 30% in advance because we, before, like we went by trust and, and it's good to trust people, but it's also when it's your business, it's good to think about like how to minimize those, those risks of people not coming. Um, Daniel? Yeah, so is your business still on? It is. Well, my mom is the one running it because it's in Mexico and now I am in the UK. My mom is running it. She does it sometimes, but she she finds it difficult to do it by herself. And I was still doing the marketing for her because she doesn't take a lot of like, good pictures. So it, it is still there. We are not like after COVID, it was kind of difficult for, for my mom to continue by herself. But in my hopes, we will we'll continue at some point. And um, if you, you see the uh, handle there on the screen, so if you go to, if you go to that handle, um, you'll, you'll see that the page exists. You can see all of the photos. You can see all of the comments, all of the likes. You can see how it's managed. Obviously, it's in Spanish because it's in Mexico, but you can get an idea for how it works. So we have a question from Victory as well. Was there ever a time when you thought about not continuing your business? Um, before I moved there and I was still running, like there are some points and especially like the food industry sometimes can be really difficult because you have to bake and do that all day. So it takes like 14, 16 hours to prepare. but I don't think there was ever a time that I was like, I, well, probably when we started doing the samples, that was the time that was that where we thought like, is it going to be possible? Like after we started, we were like, we liked it. And even if it was hard work sometimes, but when we first started, I did have a conversation with my mom was like, is this something possible that we can actually do? So, so yes there there were some points that we didn't know if we could continue with the business and what was the when did it change when did you think oh no actually we have a real business here after the first perfect perfect batch that we baked yeah so that all the macarons that came from the oven and they were all good that's where i said like okay and then the next one wasn't good. I remember that. But then, but we knew that we could do it. Mm. So we that's what kept kept us going. Great. And we have a question from Faith in the chat bar. Faith asks, "Is your business branded? And do all businesses have to be branded?" Um, what I did about the branding is I wanted to. It went through phases because like at first we wanted to do something that it was uh, a logo that was pretty like artisanal because that's part of the name of the of the of the business. So I tried to do a logo and here like Canva is a pretty good place to do like it's a really good source that I recommend you all to use for logos or for your designs. And so we went from there. And then if you see here the, the, the pictures, we kind of shifted into something more modern. And also the logo I used like more clear, like font, a clear font, instead of having so many flowers, like something more clear, which some companies and like go through it. Mm. also big companies that they have like this intricate logos but then they go to something modern which is just simple simple mm. so 
I, if do all business have to be branded, I do recommend you to have a logo for your business and I really recommend Canva. And what we did also is when we sold boxes, we put our logo in every box. And that was really important because we heard from like from our clients that they would eat and then someone like was like, where are these like people that didn't know was like, where is it from? And they had like our Instagrams. So it was pretty easy for them to see like, oh, so if you have a product and you can put your logo or you like, mm. you should do it because then you can reach also that way to other people. Great. And we have another question from Daniela. So Daniela asked, were you ever preferential about the price of your product? Like, for example, did you sell macarons at a smaller price to your family members? Yeah, um, what we did here was we went through this phase of like, what's our cost? So we knew what, what, is, what was the cost that we needed to make some profit or not make profit. And when we did like big budgets, we baked a lot of cookies, then we could sell a, a smaller price. So for people that ask, I want a hundred or I want 200, then we can give them a smaller price. But then it's also really important that you know that it is not like, oh, it's gonna be 20% off. That every decision that you make about the cost comes from what like the real cost that it's for you. Mm. So don't and even if it's for your family and, and your friends. Like sometimes we would do it, but then I think that also sometimes that your friends, when they see that you are really putting a lot of work, they also want to help your business. So I don't think it's something that you should advertise. Like if people start asking you like, oh, what's the family prize? That's really common in Mexico. Like what's the family prize? What's the friend's prize? That you can do it but always think about having a profit like if, even if it's just a small even profit. if it's smaller and and sometimes like this like they, they are going to keep buying and buying so so it's good that you gave them a, a discount but a discount that is well thought <laughs> yeah don't give a random discount think about it first yes um okay thank you everyone for your questions we just have just over 10 minutes left and we have a little activity we want to do with you. So we'll finish with the questions and we'll we'll move on now. Or well, there's someone in the waiting room. So um, right now I have this other um, Instagram account now that I'm here. And something that's really important is to create a community and it's not only about selling, but now it's creating a community of people that are interested in something. In this case, people that are interested in eating, and then you can transfer, like, put that. If I could put like ads for the macarons, so so yes, it's there is a power in micro communities. Mm. So here you can see this is Alondra's hobby page. So. She loves food, she takes photos of the food and she posts it online. She's got 743 followers. So our question to you is a little sort of hypothetical exercise. So right now, she's not making money from this page. We want to know, what do you think? How could Alondra make money from these nearly 750 followers? What would you do if you had this page? How would you make money from it? You can raise your hand or you can type in the chat box. We've obviously discussed various techniques that you can use. Um, and yeah, I want to know if you were if you were given control of this page, how would you make money? I think we have one hand up. Uh, yes, uh, Daniel. Yeah, um, I I guess I would post 
more pictures of my product and I would do some promotions on my Instagram account to gain more customers. Mm. So for example, at the moment, Alondra just posts photos of food that she likes. But as you said, she could promote things. So with these 750 followers, and most of them are in London, she could go to small London restaurants and she could say to them, look, I've got all these followers. This is how much they interact with my page. You know, I'll have dinner at your place and I'll, I'll review it. I'll post about it. Obviously, you have to be transparent. You have to say that it's an advert. But you can do a paid collaboration. So that restaurant, so Alondra could charge the restaurant to promote them to her community. And you might think, well, 750 followers is not a lot. But actually, you know, this is a super engaged page. These are people who love food and who are in London. And actually, for for the restaurant, that's a really valuable target audience. So that's one way that Alondra could make money. Can you think of any other ways? Just make surveys on the Italian food people like. That is um, a good way to engage with people. Like in your Instagram stories, if you like start doing surveys and mm. because people like normally click on that, and the more that people click on your content, the more that Instagram thinks like, oh, this is worth it. I'm gonna show it to more people and more people. So it is a good way to get more engagement. And then maybe after the survey on Italian food, you could offer discounts at Italian restaurants or things like that. So you would, you would have to work with companies yeah. like that. Yeah, like Dario was saying, um, do like a good way that like influencers get their peop um, people following them is, oh, I'm going to give away five um, meals or five vouchers. And then people also start following you. Mm. Any other ideas around how Alondra could um, turn this Instagram into, into a business, turn it into a money maker? Yeah, I I think I also have another thing to say. Um, I also think she can use influencer marketing. She can use brand influencers to promote her business. Yeah. What about um? Has anybody seen um people on social media doing blogging? So blogging, writing about things. So you can have your page where you, you visually like document things, but you could also write about it. You could direct people to your blog and on your blog, you could have advertising. So you could, you could, you could set up pretty simple advertising for other businesses. And when people go to your blog, each click gets you a little bit of money. So you have a community. They have a common interest. They're, they're a homogenous, similar demographic. You can definitely turn that, um, turn that into some money. I think David has his hand up. Um, I feel like if she can add promos, like getting one free if you, get, if you buy one, it will attract more people to get her products. Yeah. I guess just to be clear here, Alondra doesn't have a product as such. She's just going around having other people's product. So the other thing she could do is she could set up her own restaurant now, right? Or she could set up her own kitchen because she has this community of people. They trust her taste in yeah. food. She could say, oh, I've gone from being a food lover to a food maker, buy from me. And people see like, oh, she's been to good restaurants. so. <laughs> <laughs> I want to go to hers. <laughs> exactly. Okay, thank you everyone for your contributions. So now we're just going to move on because we've got five minutes left.
So before we finish today, I want to share with you my five top tips. These are the things which will have the most impact when you like when you use social media to promote your business. And the top five tips are the first one is that you need to pick the right social media platform. It must be suitable for your product or service, and it must also be a social media platform which your target customers use. So it's not like, oh, I'm gonna open a Snapchat if that's not the platform that people are using, or I'm just gonna open Facebook. Like you should do some research before and see, and also which type of content should go into that platform. My second tip is that you don't you don't set up profiles on every social media platform. So one or two is fine to begin with. It may seem like, oh, you just need to post a picture, but it can be a lot of work. So just start, it's better to start small, but with really good content instead of being everywhere, but then not posting regularly. Some businesses have only one platform. They just use Instagram or they just use Facebook or they just use TikTok. So don't feel like you have to set up 10 different accounts. You don't need to do that. You need to be a little bit selective. Yes. And number three is to be transparent. Be transparent about your product. Like what is it that you're selling? Um, I really encourage you to use in your social media pictures of your own products instead of getting the pictures from internet and thinking like, oh, but, but that is what I make. And we also had one case that another Instagram account started using our pictures. And as a business owner, and you will know, it's not nice when other people are, are getting your ideas. So just be creative and start like taking pictures of, of what you do or your service and, and be clear about what is it that you're selling and also the prices. Don't be like, oh, uh, so sometimes I see other people ask like, what's the price? And the uh, uh, business replies, oh, I'll send you the price in a direct message. Like that is not something that encourages everyone because they're gonna think like, oh, they're giving one price to them. One, So it's not, not great. On your macaron business, you literally had the price listed, didn't you? You'd say a box of six costs this much, a box of 12 costs this much. Yeah. People appreciate knowing upfront what it is they're buying and how much it's going to cost them. Yes. And the one is do cross promotion and collaboration with other businesses because it can be very effective. What I did is I, and if you go to our, my Instagram account, you'll see there is one with a jewelry. So it was a small business also in my hometown and they sold necklaces and they liked the macarons. So they were like, oh, we can do a, a photo shoot with the macarons and the necklaces. So they posted about the macarons on their, on their page. And then I also promoted theirs. So even if it's not something that you might think at first, like, oh, these go together perfectly. But if you have friends or if there is a business that you think might be like you want to get there you can talk to the business owner and mm -hmm. you can get like reach into an agreement of what you can do and although your product was quite different your target audience was quite similar so it made sense to yeah. to promote on each other's channels so and the last one is that it is a warning that you can have the greatest social media but if the product is not good you will not, unfortunately, not be successful. And something that we as small businesses need is that customers that keep coming back and they keep buying because that is where we can get, like we get most out of our money invested in marketing is in those um, buyers that keep coming for more and more. So, so yes, those are my top five tips for success. Wonderful. So before we finish, um, if we go back one, does anybody have any questions about any of these tips or any questions for Alondra? I think one person maybe has their hand up. But uh, David, do you have a question? No, okay. Anybody, some of you have been quite quiet, Nelly? 
Can you please repeat the explanation on the cross promotion and collaboration? Yes, is that you can talk to other business owners that do a totally, it can be a totally different product from yours. But in my case, it was a business like a jewelry. A jewelry business. So like earrings, necklaces, and they liked how the macarons looked. So they wanted, and they liked the flavor. So the business owner approached and is like, oh, I want to use them for a photo shoot. And I want to like, promote, like add your handle to my post. So my, like their hair followers, we're going to see like where does the, mac the macarons come from. And I like in return, like I also posted like those pictures and it, they're really good pictures. So think about what other businesses you can approach and could help to promote your product. And it's a like free promotion for, for both of you. So it's, it's a good agreement. It's a win-win situation. Yes. Mm -hmm. I see. Thank you. Any more questions? Okay, I think we'll go to the last slide. So thank you. Thank you so much, everyone, for coming today. It's been a pleasure having you with us. So um, your official certificates of attendance will be sent to you by email, um, either today or tomorrow. Um, and I would also like to ask you to fill out a feedback form. So um, I'm gonna post a link in the chat now and I'll, uh, yeah, it's an anonymous feedback form and it, your feedback basically helps us to improve these sessions. So I really want to know um, what you thought of today. Uh, I wanna know what you liked, what you didn't like, and that will really help us to improve these in future. So Londra is going to post the link um, in the chat now. Takes three minutes to to give the feedback, and you know, you're you're all uh, young entrepreneurs. You understand the value of feedback, so we would appreciate if you could give us some feedback. You know, this is our business in a way, and we're trying to make it better. So please share your thoughts with us. And yeah, we hope you enjoyed the session. Um, if there's anything you think we could improve, you can put it in the feedback form and we'll take that into consideration. And yeah, if you liked the session, please tell your parents how much you enjoyed it, tell your teachers. Um, we'll, be, we'll be very, yeah, we'll be very grateful. So thank you very much. Feel free to feel free to leave. Feel free to exit the Zoom. We'll stay around for another two or three minutes. Uh, if you want to send us any questions in the chat bar, we're just going to stay here for a little while. But if you if you're done, if you're ready to leave, you you can feel free to go. Yes, and thank you so much. Thanks, David, for your kind message. Yes, thank you. <laughs> when you set it up, we would love to. When you all set up your accounts, we we'll love to see them. Yeah, if you set up an, um, a profile for your business, please send it to us. Um, you can send it to us through your Enterprise Adventure account, or you can send it to us on, on email. You know, We emailed you the link to the session, so you can email us back. Um, yeah, we'd love to know, you know, see your pages and we can, we can even promote them for you. So yeah, yes. do share them with us. Thank you, Faith. Oh, uh, thanks, so Faith. <laughs> yeah. And, um, when I send you your certificates, I'll also send you, um, the handles to Alondra's profiles. So you can really go and have a look at her Instagram account. You can see like really high quality photos, nice design. You did it in Canva.com? Yes, in Canva. And I just use my phone to take pictures. Right. So, so you don't need a big professional camera. You can just use your mobile phone. Um, yeah, there's, there's plenty of resources. 
if you if you go on Google and you search, you know, social media marketing toolkit or best ways to do social media marketing, you'll find so many resources. If you spend half an hour reading, you're going to learn a lot. And it's all about finding yeah, a platform that's right for your business and right for your customers. Great. So thank you very much, everyone. We're finished now. So we're going to start closing the conversation. And yeah, we hope to see you. We're going to have more events like this. So we'll let you know when the next one comes. And yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone.